Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and anyone else who comes across this channel. Um, today is Monday, May the 25th. Oh, it's my youngest sister's birthday. I have to remember to go to Facebook and wish her happy birthday. It's 8.46 a.m. Okay. Uh, someone suggested in the comments that uh, Pastor J.D. Farik, I think is how you say it, F-A-R-A-G, Farak, however it's said, <laughs> I just say Pastor J.D. <laughs> anyway, so I said, well, I'm going to check it out, and that was yesterday's sermon, and it's really good so far, but I was reading I stopped to put a comment. I just had to <laughs> to tell him about the two raptures because he's saying the whole church is going to be raptured pre-trib before any of the seals and it's so wrong. I mean, he's a good pastor. All the pastors are saying that. My former pastor, he's on here. He teaches Thursday nights at some church around here. He's the one that had really fast-growing cancer, and he he was taken to a cancer center, and he was healed. I mean, it was a miracle. So anyway, he's back in town. He's preaching. He's on YouTube, Mark Carell Ministries, if you're interested. He just talks very, very fast, but he's very, very intelligent, and he uses a lot of Hebrew like Pastor Sandy. Well, anyway, this was not a plug for him, but... Um, Anyway, he's another one. I told him, and of course, you know, he still preaches. There's one rapture, and it's pre-trib, and so many people aren't ready. They are not ready. They're not like us. It's why they don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear that you have to repent, that you have to live holy because Jesus is holy that nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. They don't want to hear that they have to give up their little sins, that they need to put them down and live holy, as, as holy as possible. I mean, we have Satan and his minions to put up with, so they kind of make it impossible for us to be always holy, right? Would you not all agree we still get up and, and, and get a temper because he'll push somebody else's button, which he knows is going to push our buttons because he knows us from having his little spies and minions watch us all the time, even if it's from afar. He knows what buttons to push, which is why it's so hard for us to always be perfect. Okay, so, but we know to repent every night. Or as soon as we do it, right? Okay, so Luke 21, 36 is, is so clear. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son, the Son of Man, which is Jesus Standing before him, I look at that as the bride. If you're not in the bride and you are one of the some others that Jesus told me would also go, I believe you're in the wedding party. Don't all brides have bridesmaids? Don't grooms have groomsmen? And then what about guests? But is the, bra is the wedding right away? How is it that we're in our wedding chamber for seven days, which is the seven years of tribulation, if we're coming back down to help harvest the wheat, which is the rest of the church, and anyone else who's decided to accept Jesus, which will be... All, the Bible says all manners of nations and languages and peoples and tongues. So I believe that many, many, many Muslims and Buddhists and uh, 
Harry Krishnas and, you know, atheists and, uh, shoot, there's so many kinds of religions, I can't even possibly name them all, but you get the point. They're going to be intelligent enough to see their children are snatched from them and they're going to hear the Christian's view and then the government's view and I believe that with prayer and us coming back to help them, Jesus will have assignments. I, this, I just believe it. Because so many people have heard the same thing. It wasn't just me. That he will send us back down here to help harvest the wheat. And I don't believe we're going to be down here long. That the six seals, we will help protect them, prepare them, feed them, heal them. I even see us raising people from the dead. Maybe not everybody, because some people might be ready to go to heaven already, but not everybody. So it's just all up to Jesus, who he wants us to save or not. Okay, so in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, like I was telling Pastor J.D., that when Paul is speaking about those of us who are alive and remain... We'll meet the Lord in the air when Jesus comes on the clouds and the whole world sees him. And the tribes will mourn people who didn't yet believe. Why else would they mourn? Why wouldn't they go, oh, hallelujah, our blessed hope is here? No, they're mourning. Why? Because they didn't listen. They believe the government story of maybe they say UFOs took us. I don't know, but that's a very plausible theory. Okay, so anyway, I stop. I have to type all this out, and then I get to reading this comment, and I'm like, I got to share this. <laughs> so all that led to this, okay? This lady says, and I got to read it word for word. My 10-year-old son told me this morning, so this was 13 hours ago yesterday, so I guess Sunday morning, he had a dream sometime Sunday night, Sunday morning, Saturday night. Okay, my 10-year-old son told me this morning, upon waking... That he had a strange dream. He said that in his dream, now listen to the details. We were sitting on the couch talking when suddenly a blue and white button appeared that was lit up. Inside the button there was written, ready. We pushed the button at the same time and suddenly a bright beam of light came down on us. Then all of a sudden we were on a cloud. Then he saw a building that looked golden. Next we were inside that building in a room sitting down along with other people waiting. Then the scene changed. We were by a shiny river, sitting at a small table that had food on it. There was soft green grass, he said, and pretty flowers in different colors. Then everything became lit up, and a figure was walking by. The figure, oh, Jasper, shh, shh, Jasper, 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 come here and be quiet, come, come here, oh, he's got to hush, he's got to bark at everything in the hall, okay, 
I'm trying to stop him from that so he won't become an, a nuisance to anybody. Okay, so uh, pretty flowers in different colors. Then everything became lit up and a figure was walking by. The figure was wearing a bright white robe and a blue sash across his chest. My son said that he couldn't see the eyes of this person. After he had walked by, the dream ended. I am sharing this for encouragement and to keep watching for the return of Jesus. God bless you all. And I told her I'm going to share this on my channel. I pray this that is okay. But since she said it was for encouragement and to keep watching, I figured she wouldn't care. So, that is the dream of a 10-year-old, which some are very intelligent, but that is very detailed. And no doubt, the figure he saw was Jesus Christ. So, I thought that was an awesome rapture dream worth sharing. So, I said all that before to lead to this. <laughs> so, I pray that you are blessed this day and that you understand that the scriptures are clear about two raptures. There, it is so clear to me, a multitude too large to number. I even asked Pastor J.D., I said, don't you think that somewhere is written down how many Christians are on the planet? Because churches keep, uh, they keep records. Now, they don't know how many people are like, us, like I am still considered a member of my last church. I never withdrew my membership, so I'm sure they've got me counted. But many of you that's met the Lord online, you just have, well, the powers that be probably know exactly who is online saying what based on what you say you're counted as a Christian so I have no doubt they have a count but this multitude that appears in heaven is going to be too large to number which we know Jesus can do all things he could number the crowd in a second but to a human it was to, to the angel and John, it was too large to number. It was huge. And I am sure that it is the church, the rest of the church, and anybody else who came to know Jesus as their Savior. And there are Christians all over the world, but there will be even more from countries who do not have that many Christians. Anyway, I'm going to end it here, and I hope that that encourages you to stay holy and keep repenting and don't give up. Stay on the straight and narrow. And, and I've been forgetting to add this. Remember that no weapon formed against us will prosper, whatever it is. And I have to claim that every night, and I've been forgetting lately. Anyway, I'm going to just say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over myself, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you and your devices. And over your internet connection so we can stay connected until we're out of here. Can it be much longer? I don't think so. They've got that, what did he call it? He mentioned it in the sermon. Um, operation. Something like fast as lightning. It means fast as lightning. They want to hurry up and get this COVID vaccine. And and he was talking about these two 
men that was having a interview thing back and forth and the one was saying you have no right to not take the vaccine you have no right to not quarantine yourself in your home or something like that you have no right not to wear a mask that was it that was one of them anyway <laughs> it's it's a good uh, sermon I will put the link of it in the description box for anybody that would like to see it if you can't read the description box again it is um, let me tell you Bible prophecy update dash May 24th comma 2020 okay and the channel J capital J period capital D period capital F A R A G for rock okay so, with that I'll say, bye for now. I will talk to you later.